Okay. So, um, as mentioned earlier, the BRAF mutation is a very poor prognostic indicator, and V600E accounts for 90% of all mutations. It's associated with a right-sided tumor, females, poorly differentiated histology, and commonly associated with peritoneal disease. And single-agent BRAF inhibitors, as mentioned earlier, have had negligible ben benefit to about 5%. So what we already know thus far is that right-sided tumors fare poorly. We saw that from 80405 with very, very poor overall survival. Now, in regards to FIRE-3, I've showed this um, because the data demonstrated that whether you got full fury in Cetax or full fury in BEV, um, basically your overall survival was 12.3 um, versus 13.7 months. So is an aggressive approach worthwhile? Well, the TRIBE trial, um, which was the, the trial looking at full Fox Erie versus full Fury, is one of actually one of my favorite studies. And it demonstrated benefit overall for the patient population, um, but specifically when looking at the BRAF mutant patient population, they noted that the median disease-free survival could be 7.5 months if provided full Fox Erie, with an overall response rate of 56%, and a median overall sur survival of 19 months. So that's a dramatic improvement versus full Fury, as mentioned um, in the original uh, FIRE-3 trial. Now, we have heard already of the very promising early data from the Beacon study. And the first 30 patients had a run-in phase, of which we already know that the overall response rate for all patients was 48%, and the overall response rate was even higher at 59% if you've only had one prior line of therapy. The PFS was eight months, and the median overall survival was 15.3 months if you had received the triplet. And we are hoping to hear about the final results because um, we know the study has completed enrollment. Once again, the primary endpoint is overall survival. So as of August 7, 2018, as many of you know, they received breakthrough indication for the triplet uh, for benimetinib and carafenib and cetox for this patient population. Now, what about the toxicities that were noted? Well, two patients discontinued treatment due to adverse events. The most common grade three, sorry, the most common toxicity is just overall patient population. 77% of patients did have diarrhea. 66% of patients had rash. But in regards to grade three, four SAEs, at least 10% of patients had fatigue. Once again, the first 30 patients only is what we're discussing. Urinary tract infections, increased LFTs, and increased creatinine kinase. And also keep in mind, when you combine a MAC and an EGFR inhibitor, you can have a significant rash, and BRAF inhibitors also may result in superficial squamous cell carcinomas. Now, friendly reminder, do not presume early results result necessarily in positive pivotal results. And I can say this because the study that I also participated in, Emblaze 370, if you recall, which was basically combining um, atezolizumab with cobimetinib, um, had very promising results because we knew that as single agents, PDL1 um, and um, the MEK inhibitor did not have benefit as individually. But when combined, there was very promising activity in the first 20 patients with a response rate of 20%. And as a result, Roche went straight from early phase one data, um, phase one slash two data, to a phase three trial, which many of you are already familiar with. So this was the Kobe Atezo study versus Atezo versus Regorafenib in a two to one to one randomized fashion. Um, this has currently uh, been submitted for publication and the primary endpoint was overall survival. But it was a very negative study. So Atezo and Kobe, the survival was 8.9 months, Atezo alone was 7.1 months, and Regorafenib had an overall survival of 8.5 months. So we went straight from very early promising results to a very large phase three negative trial. So in conclusion, the BRAF mutation is a poor prognostic indicator, as mentioned earlier. Standard chemotherapy results in poor median OS of only 12 to 14 months. However, when you give full Fox Erie plus bevacizumab, the median overall survival is 19 months, and appears to be an optimal regimen for treatment-naive patient population. Uh, for, for based upon we, the data we know so far, it may be a bit too early to adopt the Beacon triplet regimen for treatment-naive patients. Once again, the Beacon trial was studied specifically in the refractory patient population. It was only the first 30 patients. Toxicities were noted, and it's likely we will see additional toxicities, obviously, once we have the final results from the trial. So currently, for the purpose of this discussion, once again, it cannot be recommended in the treatment-naive patient population. There are too many unknowns. Thank you.